All right, good morning, everybody. I've come here over a thousand miles from home to bring my son to the exciting Oregon State Library. How about that? I'm just kidding. That's not what we came for. We came for the Enchanted Forest, which we did yesterday. But since we're in the neighborhood, I had to come take London's picture in front of the Oregon State Capitol here in Salem. They got cranes going over there, this big old fountain making noise. There's traffic rolling by. It's loud at the state capitol. Anyway, we're not gonna be out here for long. We only have parking for five minutes or so. I just had to pull the dad move and make the kids stand in front of the state capitol. Actually, what we're trying to do is spend a little father-son time together, driving for a couple of thousand miles, seeing some of the sights that took him to Enchanted Forest, which I love up here. Now we're on our way to another sort of bucket list destination in Oregon, but along the way, pretty much right in our path is something I've never seen, but we ought to stop at. Welcome to McMinnville, Oregon, home of this, the Evergreen Aviation Museum, which I can already tell just from looking at it from the outside is going to be epic. Now, just like these jet fighters here, I've taken a lot of flack for coming through Oregon many times before, but never stopping at this museum for the reason that this god Gantuan barn in front of us is the home of a former Southern California resident. One of the most famous airplanes in the world that London until now has never heard of. I feel a little bit ashamed about that, but we're about to remedy it right now because the Evergreen Aviation Museum is the home of Howard Hughes famous Spruce Goose, the largest wooden airplane on Earth. Now the Spruce Goose, which is probably most famous to younger people from the movie The Aviator now, used to be located down in Long Beach Harbor, very close to where I grew up. And there was a massive dome constructed next to the Queen Mary to house it. I went to the Queen Mary several times as a kid, but we never ventured over into the Spruce Goose Dome. So even though I'm a history fan, and I'm a fan of Howard Hughes, a casual fan of Howard Hughes, and I lived in Long Beach for a while, I've actually never laid eyes on the spruce goose before. But that is about to change right now. Oh my gosh. Look at this place. Look at the size of it. You can see the spruce goose right away. Oh my gosh, I need to go up these stairs. This place is gargantuan. It was big on the outside. It's even bigger on the inside. And look how many gigantic airplanes fit in here like little toys. But absolutely dwarfing them all is the Spruce Goose. Would you look at the shine of that aircraft? Oh my gosh, no wonder everybody gave me such a hard time for so long that I've never seen the Spruce Goose. What do you think, London? Big. <laughs> Big doesn't do it justice. Holy crap does it a little bit of justice, but that's a swear. I would never say that. And don't you say it either, kids. Now, what I remember of the Spruce Goose's history goes something like, during World War II, when materials were scarce to build machinery and aircraft, we needed ways to transport more cargo and material over to Europe, over to Asia. And Howard Hughes came up with the idea, what if we built a giant transport ship of the sky, a big, huge cargo plane. We made it out of wood, so it was cheaper and quicker to manufacture. Sure. But it ended up being somewhat of a boondoggle. A lot of government money was spent and the thing never got off the ground during the war. There were all kinds of accusations that he had wasted the government's money on purpose, that the thing would have never flown. Howard Hughes did a demonstration flight, just one in Long Beach Harbor, to prove that it would fly. And it did fly just that once down there in Southern California. And then it was put into storage, obviously, over at that dome later on as a tourist attraction. That's about the extent of my knowledge. Other than that, the Spruce Goose is a name cooked up by the newspapers. Howard Hughes wanted to call it the Hercules. Now look at London over there. Remember that we are on the roof, basically, of the gift shop in here, and look how far above his head the tip of the wing is. Now it might give you some sense of scale as to just how massive this big flying boat is. Look at those tiny people down there on the little porch of the Hercules. I've got to admit, I've never seen anything like it. I don't know what else we can learn down there. All I know is I've got to get closer. Dude, the sheer scale of this is mind boggling. Look at the size of the tail. And then look at the whole fighter plane behind it. Look how small it looks. It's like of World War II style planes. This is like the freaking mothership. Oh my gosh, it is just not real. Like my brain cannot compute what it's seeing. Look at how high above it, these people. Just this wing is way over my head. And then look at the tiny ant-like stature of the people. 
below the tail of the spruce goose. Oh my gosh. There are whole helicopters parked underneath its rear. Seriously, there's a whole Huey underneath. Oh, look at this. Speaking of the movie, The Aviator, under the tail over here is a miniature set used during the filming of that movie. And look at the miniature under construction Hercules they've got over here. That's how it was built, all out of wood. Look at that. It's kind of cool. Not only is it like just, you know, a little monitor, monitor, miniature or a model of the plane itself showing what it's made out of. It's actually screen used for the background of the movie. See that? They would shoot the miniature and then add it in as the background behind Leonardo DiCaprio. I can't really be impressed by that miniature right now. I wouldn't even be impressed by it. Leonardo DiCaprio walking up to me right now. I can't think of or look at anything else. But this massive gray beast, dude, wingtip to wingtip. This plane takes up the entire building. There is an entire aviation museum, literally located under its arms, as it were. I feel like it's taken us like 20 minutes just to walk around it. I was not properly prepared for this. I do not know how to put this in words. Look at London's trying to walk down nose to nose with it. Look how little he is compared to that thing. I love that it says experimental over the door there. And I also love that it has this coiled up rope. Like they're just gonna pull up to the dock. For a second I was gonna ask, is it actually sitting on its belly over here? But now I can see that there's some sort of basement down there with the, uh, the Bombay doors open. London just told me that the wingspan tip to tip is 320 feet, which is just a little bit over the length of a football field. Dude, I got a pretty wide lens on this camera and there's no way I can fit the whole Hercules in the photo with me. This thing is absolutely massive. And of course, our military has built all kinds of massive planes, but the reason this one is just over the top. It's not just because it's built out of wood or anything like that. And not just the Howard Hughes history and all that stuff. You know, one man's vision and all that. But because it is truly one of a kind. It only flew once, so it was successful. But not successful enough to, you know, go into production. And by the time even that test flight was conducted, I think the war was already over. Dude, I'm sure that the engines on this bad boy are large. But they look so puny compared to that big old wing. Lennon just pointed out to me, literally pointed out to me, there are 28 cylinders per engine. That is wild. Apparently there's a lot we can learn out here about the Spruce Goose. But I won't bore you with all that information now, because I'm sure there's plenty of documentaries you could just watch about this plane in specific. But they're gonna give you more information than I can give you at a glance like this. I just wanted to invite you along to see what it looks like today and where it's at. Yep, I was correct. It only flew once. And there's the information on the one and only flight, including a photo of the flight crew and old Howard Hughes himself. What I didn't know is that it only flew for half a mile and only at 25 feet of altitude. See, look, there it is in Long Beach. I lived just over that way in Long Beach and uh, it only got up to 25 feet before apparently being put into storage for 33 years. Then later, of course, like I was telling you, they built the dome where it was on display in Long Beach right next to the Queen Mary until 1993 or so when somehow they barged it most of the way here and then had to come the last seven and a half miles to make Minville by truck. Look at this. This actually answers a question I had. It was originally designed to have clamshell doors in the nose. They just weren't installed for the test flight. Which is why they're not on the Spruce Goose today. I was wondering how in the heck you were supposed to load this thing. I'm not sure if this is allowed, but let me squeeze back here just to show you. Here's the pit with this sort of cradle the Spruce Goose is resting on. Remember, it is a big flying cargo ship. So it's resting in this like barge thing. I wonder if this is the actual trailer they brought it into the museum on. Pretty freaking wild, dude. We're surrounded by so much crazy cool stuff. Maybe we'll take a look at some of the other stuff in a minute, but I've gotta go up inside. The cockpit tours are 40 bucks. They're sold out for today, so we're not gonna get up into Howard Hughes's seat today or anything like that. But you can come up this flight of stairs to that porch we saw earlier and head inside of the cargo hold. Would you look at the size of that cargo hold? We're looking into the belly of the beast back there. You can see there's a hatchway down to another compartment. A lot of information in here and materials to look at, including some information about Howard Hughes himself. I always liked Howard Hughes. You know why? Because he rescues Cliff Secord at the end of the Rocketeer. And any friend of Peavy is a friend of mine. Look at this. I know there's lots of reflections. It makes it kind of confusing to look at. But here's the stairway, the metal staircase up 
to the flight deck, which is off limits to us at the moment. Gotta be on one of those cockpit tours. Check it out, here are pictures of what's above us on the flight deck. Boy, I can see a lot of people up there. And there it is, there's the controls. It was piloted for that one and only time by Howard Hughes himself. Which is kind of crazy, because if I was in a garage right now, or a gas station, or a house that Howard Hughes was in, I'd be going, dude, Howard Hughes was here. That wasn't my first thought when I entered this. However, Howard Hughes was in here, and his whole livelihood and reputation were all tied up with this place. There are many claims of where Howard Hughes' ghost is, but for all we know, he could be here still. London just showed me this. Look at this. Apparently, the nail gun was invented for the Spruce Goose. I love this about London's generation. He immediately said, I'm gonna fact check that. I didn't notice this when we first walked in, but look at all those beach balls right there. Apparently Howard was so worried about an accident happening in the test flight and the boat sinking that he literally filled up all the extra spaces he could with beach balls. I am not making this up, literal beach balls. That is literally a beach ball right there. They found while they were restoring the plane to move it to the museum. Here. What do you think? I know you never heard of the Spruce Goose before basically yesterday, but you impressed? Mm -hmm. By the size? The girth? What are we talking? Big. So weird. Ever since I was a little kid, I had to hear about the spruce goose and the dome, and then it moved away, and I never got to see it. And every time we would go to the Queen Mary, my dad would bring up how the spruce goose used to be in the dome. And then every time I would come to Oregon, people would give me grief, like, why didn't you go see the spruce goose? So I feel like I finally crossed off a lot of checklists. Oh, now I feel like we can finally look at some of the other stuff. Look at this little CB weird plane down there. You got helicopters up on top of us. They had a quarter scale model of the Spirit of St. Louis. As with any good air museum, they've got the replica of the 1903 Wright Flyer. They got some early Curtis aircraft. Dude, I would not want to strap myself in to some balsa wood and string sitting in front of a giant engine and trying to take off into the air. This dude is super brave and he's extra brave. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a daddy long legs next to his face and he's not freaking out at all. In fact, this plane is so old, it's covered in spider webs. Got some biplanes in here. Early planes are always neat to me. And of course, fighter jets and helicopters and gunships are interesting. But to me, it's sort of the World War II years and immediate post-war years before the jet engine became common. Those are like the sexy years of airplanes, you know? Just look at them. So cool. Hey, look at this model of the Spruce Goose. You think this is the one they use in the Rocketeer? Speaking of the Rocketeer. Right underneath the Hercules, right in the shadow of its nose. Well, figuratively speaking. They do actually have a GB sitting over here, but it's the GB Sportster, the Model E, and although similar looking, especially with the paint job over here, it's a little different and the Model Z, which was essentially just a giant engine with a pilot straddling it that you saw in the film The Rocketeer. This is a replica, I believe, started in the mid-80s and didn't fly until the 90s. One of those early GBs. Speaking, of, by the way, of the Rocketeer, who were the Rocketeer's enemies? The guys who built these. The first jet fighters, the Measureschmitts. Look at that. Boy, Measure Measureschmitt is a lot harder to say than I than I remembered. Measureschmitt 262? Yeah, there it is. Look at that. The first jet fighter. Thankfully, they came way too late in the war to do the Luftwaffe or their boss any good. Look at this. You got another World War II German aircraft over here. There's also another replica, it turns out. I'm not even going to say that out loud, just in case, but look at this. Creepy. All right, there's a lot of cool planes in here. Lots of historic aircraft, lots of interesting stuff, lots of just cool looking stuff, even when you don't know squat about planes like me. Stuff like Russian MiGs that I used to shoot down in flight simulators as a kid. We didn't come here for these minor demigods. We came here for Hercules. We've seen that now. So until I return, that's gonna wrap it up for the video portion of this uh, visit. Cool experience, and they do, by the way, have a gift shop and a snack bar that smells really good, although we didn't 
eat anything from it. I definitely would be remiss if I did not mention that straight out of the doors of the Aviation Museum, directly across the parking lot, is a space museum as part of this complex. Which is included in your ticket price. It's got drones in it, or UAVs as they're called. That's what I learned in there. They've got the SR-71 Blackbird in there, the spy plane screen used in the X-Men cartoon. There's even a huge full-on Titan missile in there. Wait a minute, Doc, are you telling me this sucker is nuclear? Oh man, where's the warhead? And of course, we've got a replica of the lunar module in here. Look at the size of that rock. There's a little Charlie Duke quote there for you. We've got a replica of the moon buggy out here. Dude, that thing looks like it'd be fun to drive on Earth. Lots of cool stuff like that. Surprisingly, nobody was moonwalking. But there were all kinds of pieces of space tech. Moonwalkers and landing craft. Limb hammocks. Control panels. Even a whole bunch of other missile parts. Everything from a Saturn V all the way up to them giant missiles from Superman IV. Look at the size of those things. There's a piece of the Berlin Wall down there. John F. Kennedy. This thing. The point is... There's a lot to see. Definitely worth your time and worth the money. I'll we'll have to save most of the space stuff for next time, though. Whew, I'm still sore from yesterday at the Enchanted Forest. All right, gang. Well, I'm sure London would like to spend some time with me out on the road here getting grub and doing stuff like that without me filming every two seconds. So this is where we're going to leave you for today, out here in the vineyards in front of the Air and Space Museum. A museum which, for being in the middle of Oregon, was unexpectedly huge and had quite the inventory. Look at this plane right here, used all the way back in the Ford administration, all the way up till the Obama administration. And now it just sits out here among the bumblebees, letting looky-loos like you and me come and marvel at its marvelous nose. I'm out of things to say, other than please go check out the links below. We got the school year coming up for you, which means a little bit of traveling on my own for me, and then we have the haunt season coming up, and then some crazy plans in October. Soon enough, instead of road tripping, it'll be me that's up in the air in one of these planes. But not the Hercules. That flew only once, and only once ever. All right, you've done your duty, friends. Check out the links below, like I said, and you can go home and sleep well. something that's like a video game. Woohoo! He'll be entertained. It's just a joke. It's just a joke. Good morning, everybody. I've come more than a thousand miles from home to bring my son to the Oregon State Library. How exciting. Oh my gosh, that is cool. Look at this. The driveway looks like a runway. Corn! Corn! Where are the children of it? Sorry, that was a corny thing to say. Sorry. Oh my gosh, look at this Boy Scout thing in the back of the parking lot. These are a little Boy Scout camp. I know that says be prepared on top, but that is pretty much a dead ringer for the gate to Jurassic Park, which begs the question, the very important question, and one and only one question, London. What do they got in there? King Kong? What do they got in there, 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 King Kong? I almost choked on my spit. That was. Weird. <laughs>